We're back again on the Transylvania map in Way of the Hunter, and as promised, we now have a red deer collar to help in our pursuit of some bigger stags. And I've been messing with it trying to understand how it works, and what I've found out so far is that this call, which as you can see in the bottom middle, only attracts the low fitness males, is all we're going to have access to until we harvest and sell 10 called animals. And that's why I think it's important to look through the perks. So if we go to the character section and the first one here in strategist, within call, sell 10 called animals. That unlocks the second level calls. As you can see, there's second level calls available underneath that. So I don't think that means we're not going to be able to get big stags. In theory, we could be calling a smaller one in and, and maybe that could help bring the herd along. I'm not sure, but I don't know that we'll get 10 today. I'd like to. And we'll see how big of a difference the caller makes. We haven't tried to call any species at all in this game. And I've got to say, it's a whole lot easier when they're just out in the open like this than all of last time tracking them around for close to an hour before we finally did get one. So I have no idea what range the caller may have, but the wind is good. We'll try to get maybe to within 200 yards-ish of the stags, and we'll do a call or two and see what happens. They're definitely not very big, so I assume they're lower fitness, and hopefully we can bring them in. And that stag there, which is a one-star young one, is definitely under 200 yards, so I say we try it again, see if we maybe get a different result. And again, I'm not really sure if we should expect them to just turn and come in, that one seems to be, if anything, moving off the other direction to get back with the herd. I'm not exactly sure. I don't want to overcall or anything, but I don't know how to know if they've heard it. As much as I want to learn how the callers work, I also want to do some red stag hunting, and I don't want to sit here and try to call in a bunch of little ones for forever, so I think we're going to try to take this at just over 200 yards. It's a perfect angle there to get in through to the chest cavity. That looked like he got absolutely crushed by that as well. A really high jump, and he's really not even running from that shot, so he's not going to go far. Now, there's two ways to read the fact that they didn't come in. It could be that we're doing something wrong, and maybe if we were to get in front of them instead, maybe they don't like to have to turn back and go the direction they came from. It could be a bunch of things that we are just doing incorrectly. The other side could be... The star rating is, I believe, determined by fitness and age, and maybe they're high enough fitness that they just wouldn't be attracted to that, even as a young one-star deer. So I'm curious to see what the genetic potential says when we claim this guy. It might have more to do with that than anything, but I mean, the good news is we got a stag pretty quickly. And not that it needed to be followed, but that is a blood trail that anybody could end up finding the deer at the end of. Not too bad. So let's see then. For this guy, which we heart shot, that explains a lot of the blood, and that's probably our farthest heart shot, 227 yards. Gonna be worth 623 credits as well, but that was 90.23%. So in theory, maybe we shouldn't have shot that. I'm gonna be honest, looking at the rack now, as a young deer, probably we shouldn't have, because we know they age, and in theory, as they age, they should be able to grow. So should we have shot that deer? Probably not one of those deals where I wanted to learn. Now the other stag in this herd looked about the same, so that'll be one we try to keep alive and just see what happens. And I think what's going to be interesting is learning how the aging mechanic works. It could be a long time until we see that payoff, but if he is one that could end up being really big, we'll be patient with it. That is the coolest thing. We've got a red stag out there just kind of roaring away. There was a hind, I think, had called that was alert, and I've just been really slowly trying to work my way over through here. I have no idea if calling would be a good idea right now. At least until we get a better vantage point, I don't think we should. But maybe one that's being vocal is going to be more likely to come in. If we can get to where we can see more than, like, 40 yards, maybe we give it a try? That look like a pretty good stag. I just kind of saw the antlers going through there. I think this is the same herd. We've had to kind of stick with them for quite some time. But if that was as big as I thought it may have been, I don't think we're going to have much luck with the collar. Now, it wasn't that one I didn't think. 
There are a whole bunch in here, though. There's a young male there. There's definitely a lot more antler there. That's a three-star mature. And I still don't think that's the one that was walking over to the left. In fact, that's right there. And maybe it's not that big. It's so tough to tell through the trees, and it's getting pretty late. It's, it's 7.30 p.m. right now. So we're going to have to make a move quick, but I really want to know what that other stag is. I'm just not real sure, but it's getting so late. I think if this guy will step out a little further, we're going to go ahead and try to take him. He's clearly the best one I can see from here. Just a little bit more into that gap. I definitely saw him hop. I think he may have been stumbling there if that was him. I'm not sure. It's so... Or that's him there, actually. He's definitely going down. It's so stressful when it gets this late. Look how dark it got. Between scoping in and taking that shot, I wondered, is there like a limit? Are we allowed to hunt after a certain time? I have no idea. The good thing is, I just thought of this, because at first I had a, a bit of a worry that we weren't going to be able to get a good picture, but we can change the time. That was as heart racing as a real life experience, trying to get a shot off in, in limited light. And the thing that was a little unfortunate, I could not place a marker in the correct area, but that is pink blood with a medium amount of bubbles. So we definitely smoked him. He actually, I think he was standing here, ran up and around, and then this blood looks like he's moving in this direction. Now, I don't know, I think we shot the three star, but I'm not even sure. And Gonna be interesting. First time really needing to track a deer with the light, but last we saw when he was going through here, it didn't look like he had a whole lot left in him. And in fact, he is laying right there, didn't even make it all the way down the hill. Now, maybe not the best spot for a picture, and I did kind of think this might be a thing that would happen. You can get it where an antler kind of ends up being under the ground, and we've seen this on some of the slopes before. They kind of start scooting, but one cool thing about the picture mode is we have, looks like all the deer heading over that way. I know it's tough to see. I don't see any bigger than the one that we shot, so I think we got the best one. But anyway, photo mode can actually pause the game, so I think it can stop him from sliding at least momentarily. And we'll see what we can do here with this. Now, like I said, going to the daylight is going to help. And again, that's kind of realistic. A lot of times people will take their animal back out the next day for a good picture. I'm still not sure how to do this with the, the one antler through the ground, though. I think... All things considered, this is not bad. At least the base kind of goes into the grass, so it makes it a little less looking like the antler is kind of hidden underground. And it's tough with him sliding down there to, to even get into the right position, so we'll call that good. At least we got a decent photo. And then the question is, what did we actually just shoot here? We managed to, looks like, just get a single lung shot in there and then back into the intestines. So I wonder if that ends up with some meat wastage. It was 731 uh, credits. That guy was a mature three star, so that was the one. 88.29% on the genetics, and yeah, about five pounds of meat wastage, so not too bad, all things considered. That is something I will screenshot as well to pay attention to future red deer. But that was pretty cool the way that worked out. I almost want to tax it, but I think we can do a little bit better. And considering how much he's worth, I think I want to go ahead and sell that and make the credits. And uh, looking like it's probably time to head back and rest. It's a good bit after dark, so we'll go and go back to morning. I probably should have mentioned as well, we had our first stag down in about 20 minutes. It took another hour to get the second one, but I wanted to check back in with the red deer that we saw at the beginning and how I mentioned we maybe don't want to take out this stag because he seems to have about the same genetic potential as the first one we shot and that one looked to be pretty good and just kind of getting confirmation to that it looks to be a very similar rack so we'll let him go we will though go ahead and try to take a hind I'm assuming that'll still be pretty decent credits and that one there is a young one so probably we want to pick a older one in theory older should be at least potentially more weight and more credits earned. And best I can tell, 
The oldest hind in this herd is this adult one right here. The rest are all young, so right about 200 yards. I think it's still that one in the front that's on the move. I don't love the angle, but we've seen the 300 do its thing before, so try to get that right into the shoulder. I see the pink blood from here, and I don't think there's any need to put in a second shot. I'm not even sure she's going to make it over the hill. Now, she went a little further than I thought. Look at the model for that, though. We really haven't gotten to appreciate the red deer models yet with the stags. It was either at night or a smaller one where we weren't worried about it as much. That looks pretty darn good. As for that though, it was a double lung shot. Of course, the near side lung being the one that we hit with the proper energy. And 243 pounds still gets us 372 credits and only two and a half pounds of meat wasted. So even at the weird angle, not a problem. And at least that is our third red deer down now. I was expecting to be able to get more, but with the way calling has gone, it hasn't really been how I thought it was going to be. That said, three times more red deer than our last hunt, so that's a plus. That is a long way off, but maybe fallow deer, if that's what that is, that one looked really good sized. Right there in the back? That's gotta be a pretty good sized fallow, and the interesting thing is, that whole herd is just south of the lodge on the property that we purchased the past to hunt, so interesting we haven't encountered them at all yet, and actually, there are a bunch of red deer down here drinking at the water. That's really interesting. Now, I'd like to continue hunting the red deer, I'd really like to actually call one in and, and take it that way to kind of help with our calling abilities, but in this case with a fallow of that size, I'm not sure that's a good idea. We'll at least try to spot and make sure we're not missing anything, but I think we gotta go with the fallow. On second thought, what is that guy? That's a four star red stag. Now, I don't know what the spook distance is on a rifle shot, and the thing that's kind of unfortunate, there's two nice ones up there. I have no idea how many stars they might be, but this all of a sudden gets really interesting and add on the fact that I'm in a horrible spot. Kind of wanted to get up here for, for a good vantage and it worked, but I'm not sure what the move is. I think we got to go for the red deer. It's amazing how quick it changes, but I don't know. I think we have a better chance at maybe getting the, the fallow still if we do end up getting the stag. That's our guy right there, 200 yards out. And of course, to complicate matters even further, the wind is absolutely awful, so I think we gotta go for this. I think maybe we better wait till it gets past the brush there, but that hind even sees us. But that looked absolutely perfect. Look at the size of that guy. I love the gray in the fur as well. I'm assuming the fallow will have spooked, in fact, they are running right up across there, so I don't know if we'll get to locate them. I was able to spot one, and it was a four-star mature, just like the stag. Is that... that's one of the red deer. Well, I have no idea what's going to go where, which probably is not going to make our lives any easier in terms of maybe getting on those fallow deer, but there must be a zone of some kind there, so that might be something we could actually work with in the future. and. I've just got to say, the difficulty of hunting the red deer, and it's a good thing, I could not pass that up. And we haven't shot a fallow deer yet. We also really haven't spent the time trying to get them that we have with the reds. That was an opportunity that was too good to pass. And especially with the wind being as it was and getting a shot off, there's just no way that I wasn't going to attempt that. Now we have roe deer, I think. Everything's passing through here at the same time. What time actually is it? It's almost 11 a.m. Kind of interesting that that's the time this is all going on, but let's see if we can figure out where the stag got to. That probably would have been a better idea to stay on it, because I don't know what direction he could have gone in. According to that, it must have been out this way. We could not have been 20 yards from, from where I just found that blood, and he's got both antlers actually visible. So first things first, we need to try to get a good picture, and because animals tend to slide on the hills, gonna want to make sure we get something before his antlers get covered. 
that would not be half bad. I don't know, I'm afraid that if he goes any further, the grass is going to end up covering up, so let's at least take one like that with better lighting. I think that's going to be pretty good. That is such a cool looking deer, he's a lot redder looking out of the, the shade as well. I'm just, I'm so pleased that that ended up working out. We can try to maybe get a slightly better angle. I liked what we had to be honest, but when we get one of this size, I think it's worth trying to take the time. And maybe one kind of like that. I wish the grass wasn't there, but nothing we can really do about having that. We'll do one to get the whole red deer body in there. And I think this one may end up going on the wall. We'll have to see what he is. Ended up being pretty much perfect considering he was walking. Double lunged him at 212 yards. That's just about fitting. Would have been 777 credits, but that guy was a mature with 83.17% genetic potential. Not half bad. Lost 5 pounds from the shot. Although when it's a 500 pound animal, 1% is not half bad. 435 now being our biggest stag. And I think we got a taxidermy it, especially considering we're probably going to wrap up at that. I really would like to go and get those fallow deer, but it's been two and a half hours and we only managed four red deer. To get one that big by the end, I don't think there's a better way to wrap up. So we'll go back and go and take a look in the trophy lodge. And as we walk around looking for a spot to place them, I wanted to talk about the calling a little bit because while we purchased the call, we weren't able to actually get any use out of it. And one of the reasons that I make the decisions I do in really any game with early access is to try to help you guys make decisions for your game. And what I'm going to say based on the color is that it would probably be smart to buy a deer color if you're starting on the North America map and try to call in some of those deer and get to that 10 sold uh, called animals. I think that's going to make a huge difference in things such as the red deer that are a little bit tougher to call in. If we had that ability to call the higher fitness tags, that may end up helping us a lot. I'm kind of thinking though, much like with the whitetail on the North America map, I like the fireplace idea here. A little bit of a, this is our first trophy animal and it's in a prominent spot. So I'm thinking between the two poses we have, I think there's some more like shoulder in this. So let's go with that one. That is going to cost us only 290 credits. Not half bad. Go ahead and do that. And we'll step back and take a look at that. That is just such a cool thing. And that gray really shows well in the lodge. What an awesome stag. I am over the moon. We had our first hunt on Transylvania where we had a bunch of wild boar and it didn't seem like it was going to be that difficult. And they were very much in the wide open. And once we finally got to the red deer, the difficulty was very clear. Today's hunt, it was, it was very tough to even find red deer. Obviously four and one being a hind in two and a half hours is not incredible numbers, but for that to be the end result, I am just so pleased and I can't wait to keep on hunting them and maybe look for a five star to put somewhere up here as well. And these lodges, they are just incredible. And I've been told by the way, this kind of angular uh, with the roof and then having the, the plaques up like that, that is very much a thing in Europe. So well done to design two different lodges and actually make them location appropriate. I wasn't sure what I thought about that when I first saw it, but actually that is a really cool thing. But anyway, I think we'll be done gawking at things in the game for today. Tomorrow is stream day, by the way, so I'm thinking we might go back to North America, grab a deer collar and work on that for the future of hunting other things. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.